Hello everyone, welcome to Arizona Bill Watch for another lively discussion of important and controversial bills. I am your host, Jose Borajero. Thank you for watching. There is a lot going on at the Capitol these days, so stay tuned because we have a fantastic show for you today. But before we do that, some housekeeping items. Number one, we would love for you to watch the whole show from beginning to end. However, you may also fast forward to the bills of your choice by using the handy chart that we have placed down below. Secondly, if you like what you see, please make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. It means a lot to us. Third, it costs money to do what we do. So if you like what you see, you may contribute by going to our website, acpeopleslobbyist.com. So with all that out of the way, let's look at the first bill. House Bill HB 2858. This bill was introduced by a Democrat, uh, Representative uh, Blattman. And what it is, it's a, uh, well, it provides a series of provisions uh, aimed at safeguarding minor children uh, from inappropriate or malicious social media activity. And it lists a whole lot of uh, activities that, uh, that it prohibits or uh, bans. And, uh, and uh, so, uh, uh, Gloria, you, um, you have been in touch with that uh, for some time now. So do you have uh, anything to say to, about that? Regarding this bill? Yes. I am opposed to it. It puts too much on businesses. This isn't a business responsibility. And if I'm not mistaken, uh, it had different ages. So the business is required to, they want the business to put features on the computers if they provide computers and social media and the business is to be, provide safeguards against who's using those computers. That is not a business's responsibility. That is a parent's responsibility to teach their kids what they should and shouldn't be doing. So with that brief, I'm totally opposed to this. So you think it should be the parents that uh, do the... Uh, educating? The, the, well, the educating and the, uh, the, uh, that have the, uh, the, the firewall between the, the kids and the computer. Right. This isn't a business's responsibility. And I am... This is one of the things that there's too much government involved in raising our children. And as I said, children should be taught right from wrong and what they should and shouldn't see on social media. And so I am totally opposed to this. Archie? Well, um, I have some problems with it because I don't truly understand some of the stuff in here. Uh, one it, of the things is that it, is, uh, it has a lot of provisions in yes, it, and, it does. It's, and it's hard to understand, really. Well, what do they mean by identify, de identified data? What does that mean? I've never heard that term before and I can't find anything on it. Uh, and then they make a provision here that they have to, the minor has to be able to opt out. Right. Well, shouldn't it be that before they can get in, they have to opt in right. instead of opting out? Uh, right. So, uh, you know, and then, of course, the big thing that I see here, nowhere in this bill is there any provision for enforcement. How are they going to enforce it? Who's going to enforce it? How is it going to be enforced? Right. Um, and, and there's nothing in here that specifies what the legislative intent is. So, no, I, 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 think, I think the concept may be a great concept, but I don't think this bill reaches it. You know. So my, I'm a no on this bill. Okay, so we have two problems with it. Uh, number one is that uh, it, well, it, it, it's a combination of two things, number one, and one is that there is no enforcement provision, mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, so you have a problem there. Uh, but the idea that the business should guard, that should be in charge of this, uh, is contrary to the, uh, to the idea that the parents should have control over the kids. So that's, that's, uh, that, that is a, uh, a problem. And it's very expensive for these businesses to do this. 
and is the business because a business doesn't know people these children know how to lie they know how to get around these safe they know all of this stuff so the onus should not be put on the business to monitor that what the kids are looking at okay so we are in agreement that uh, this is going to be a no all the way around correct uh, this bill will be in the house appropriations committee on uh, on the 19th which i believe is tuesday and uh, so if you have an opinion on that folks you should contact it's monday the 19th is monday is the mon uh, monday's 19th okay so if you, <clears throat> if you have an opinion on this make sure you contact your legislators especially the uh, house appropriations uh, committee uh, uh, members uh, and let them know that uh, this is not something that you would like that's my opinion yes <laughs> House Bill HCR 2060, short title, Lawful Presence, E-Verify Program Penalties. Uh, this bill uh, was uh, done in the House Government Committee. Uh, it's not clear what happened with it. Uh, the, the state uh, legislature website is not clear for some reason. It is uh, scheduled for appropriations on the 19th, uh, but uh, if it did not clear the House Government Committee, then it would not be in appropriations necessarily. So it may or may not be in, a, in appropriations on the 19th, okay? But regardless, what it does is that it very simply states that if a city uses state's monies for welfare, it must ensure that the recipients are here uh, legally present, that they have a, a, what's referred to as a lawful presence in the United States, uh, which means that if you're uh, an illegal alien, you should not be getting any kind of assistance. Uh, so uh, that seems like a good idea. Uh, Gloria, what do you think of that? It's a good idea that anybody who is receiving welfare benefits, any money from the state, any services from the state, that they should be a citizen. But this is going back to, this is so convoluted because currently people are getting driver's licenses without being citizens, is my understanding. And so you need, if somebody wants to do this, they need to start with the driver's licenses and then move forward to this. I think that this is putting the cart before the horse. Well, I think, uh, I seem to remember, and I should have looked this up, I seem to remember that there's a statute that says that you cannot receive government assistance unless you have a lawful presence here. But what's a lawful presence? Yeah, that, and that's what is addressed in here. Uh, yeah, but the, my point is that if that is already a statute, why do we need this one? All we need to do is enforce the other one. But regardless... Well, this, uh, th yeah. this is another one of those provisions where I've talked about in the past uh, that our legislature is not really... Members of the legislature are not looking at what they're drafting. Right. Okay, this bill uh, is bringing us into line with Texas. Uh, we've all seen on television uh, the thing about New York and what's going on in New York and they're going bankrupt and all of this kind of stuff and all of the problems they're having with illegals. The major problem with this bill, and I'm fully in, a, in accord with the bill, but the problem with it is that the federal government has usurped the, 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 prior, you know, the priority position on this in which they say we're going to let these illegals into our country and we are going to provide for them. Now, the state cannot enact a piece of legislation that violates federal law because under the priority of, of, of uh, the, the law is you got the U.S. Constitution, U.S. treaties, federal laws, state constitution and state law. So this bill is way down the line in, in order of priority. So I, I agree with it. And if they want to in, in, enforce it and enact it and then enforce it, I think it's a great thing. We need to be in conflict with our federal government at this point because they're not protecting us under the constitution. That's right. And, and unfortunately, and I think that that's where the federal government, <clears throat> through all the years, that it's been able to morph into, well, the federal government 
oversees all of this and not the states. And unfortunately, and now because that's what's happened, the federal government, now everything that the states are against, oh, well, you can't do that because it's against federal law. And unfortunately, all of our, throughout the years, our representatives uh, have allowed that to happen. They're not following the Constitution where, for states' rights, in my opinion. Okay, so if I read this correctly, uh, at least your opinions, it seems to me that we all, we're all in agreement that the idea is good. Uh, we're not sure whether it can be enforced. Correct. Correct. Senate Bill SB 1056, short title, Municipalities, Counties, Fee Increases, Vote. This bill uh, had a uh, Senate third reading, which means the full chamber, and it failed. Uh, it failed on the 15th this week. Uh, we are covering it even though it failed because we think it's such an important piece of legislation that maybe we can be, uh, it can be brought back again in some other fashion. But what the bill di did very simply was to, to bring municipalities and counties in line with the state law. State law says that you cannot increase taxes or fees except by a vote of two-thirds majority. Counties and municipalities do not have that uh, requirement. They can increase your taxes by just a simple majority. So what this would do is bring that in in line uh, with the uh, with the state law. However, it's a weird thing, uh, and those of you, I don't know how much you get uh, deeper into the weeds regarding these things, but it shows here that uh, uh, Senator Bennett voted against it, and that normally happens when you support the bill and you vote against it, it's so that you could bring it back as to, to reconsider it for a second vote, right? But that's not happening here, and so I don't understand why he voted the, against it. Uh, the, uh, it fails 15 to 11, which means that uh, one Republican did not vote for it, and that was Bennett. So I don't understand how that happened, but it happened. So folks, if you are contacting legislators, uh, you might as well tell them that uh, you like the idea of the uh, municipalities being in, 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 in line, and they should not be increasing taxes unless it's a two-thirds two uh, majority. Uh, but that's my idea. What do you guys think? No, I, I like this, I like this um, bill, a uh, piece of legislation. I, I think, it, you know, if, if you're going to increase taxes, it should take more than, than 50 plus one. Absolutely. Uh, and that's just entirely too easy to increase the, the taxes that, that we have to pay. Now, the one thing that I do have a question about is that it talks about municipalities. And I'm wondering whether that municipality would include school boards and their bond issues. Uh, I, I, you know. No, that would be a separate thing. Well, I know, but I mean, shouldn't we have at least two thirds of the members of the, the school board to vote to put a proposition before the the, the, the members? Uh, the right, right. But that's 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 a uh, that's a separate uh, issue. They're talking about municipalities and uh, and uh, uh, counties. So they should be more specific, is what you are saying? No, not necessarily. I'm. It's just <clears throat> you know. Look, my my mind runs off in weird directions sometimes. Uh, we know you're weird, but still. Yeah. yeah. We <laughs> no, it's 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 a, it's a separate issue. Uh, typically speaking, the when it comes to school boards, they are kind of a quasi different. They're not they're not really subdivisions of the state in some manners, in some other manners they are. So it's kind of a gray area there. So generally speaking, when you have legislation about this sort of thing, you you have a separate legislation for for school boards as, as opposed to the cities and, uh, and counties. And that's what you're seeing here. Yeah, but regardless, right. it is a good bill. It should have passed. I don't know why Bennett uh, uh, voted against it. 
but uh, that's what it is. Senate Bill SB 1097, short title, School Districts Partisan Elections. This, uh, this bill uh, was in the, uh, in the Senate, uh, they had, had a Senate third reading, which means it was a vote of the full uh, Senate, and it passed uh, 16 to 10 with uh, four people who did not vote. Uh, it was introduced by Senator Watsack, and it simply requires that uh, school board elections be conducted by a partisan uh, primaries fo followed by general elections. And uh, the, what's happening here is that for all practical purposes, everybody knows that school board members are very partisan, okay? But we try to convey the illusion that these are nonpartisan elections. So what this bill would do is it would bring it back into line with other elections uh, and, and, and actually show what reality is. That is that you have people on the Republicans and people who are Democrats and they're very well defined. So uh, in that sense, I like the bill, but you guys may have a different opinion. Can I say something first? May I of say course you may. First? Of course you may. Well, absolutely. Say Before you go. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so this goes just <clears throat> back to a bill that we talked about the, uh, a couple of weeks ago regarding that they want school board members to only be <clears throat> people who have served in the district, right. school district. Right. We all know what the <laughs> the school districts are. We all know most of the people, 90%, 95% of the employees of the school districts are on the other side of on the left side of politics. And so I think I like this, but unfortunately it's I, I like this bill because I think the um, party that they're affiliated with should be revealed because unfortunately that's where we are in politics today. Nothing is nothing is not partisan. And but it also, like I said, going to that other bill, we know what we're getting. Yes. I'm totally against this bill for the simple reason that if anyone should ever have any interest in doing anything that is nonpartisan, it should be in relationship to school kids. And I agree with that. And if you're going to bring partisan politics into it, then you know, I mean, you, you, you're just moving down, in my humble opinion, you're moving down the, the wrong road. Now, along that lines, and I don't know if you two have seen it yet or not, but there is another bill that has been introduced relating to school boards, which requires that before you can become a member of a school board, you have to have four years of college education. Yeah. Oh, I, I don't. Re I think I remember uh, so, that. So I mean, now you've got to you've got to be either a Democrat or a Republican, but you've got to have four years of college education. Uh, no, I'm against this bill. I think it's a bad bill. Okay. Well, wait a second. Uh, Fine, I accept the fact that you're against the bill and the reasons that you are against it, okay? But it has nothing to do with the college education part of it. What this bill does is more or less a truth in advertising uh, situation. We know, we know what happens at the school board meetings and we know who votes which way. What happens is that when it comes to election time, it is very difficult for the voters to identify who does what because of their rhetoric. This bill would make it so that people have a better understanding as to what the position may be for the people running for the board. And in that sense, I think it's a very good bill. It when did, I walk in with my pet alligator, they'll all vote the same way. It doesn't make any difference what their party is. Okay. So we so, have two yeses and a no. Okay. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll leave it at that. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> now, c keep in mind, we're going to see this bill again, wow. whether you whether you like it or not, because it did uh, it did clear the Senate. So it will be in a House committee, most likely the House uh, Education Committee, or maybe even Government Committee, sometime in the next couple of weeks. Yeah, well, so we'll we'll be looking at this bill again. Mm -hmm. Senate Bill 1207, short title, Attorney Fees Defendant Acquittal. This bill was uh, introduced by uh, Senator Rogers, and uh, it, uh, it cleared the Senate uh, Military Affairs, Public Safety, and Border Security <laughs> Committee, long, long name for the for the bill, for the for the for the uh, committee, but um, it it did pass a few a couple of weeks back, and nothing else has happened uh, with this bill. Uh, most likely, it would be uh, voted on for the uh, in the full Senate uh, sometime next week, uh, but we don't have any indication of that just yet. Uh, very basically, what the bill does is that it says if you. If, if, if you're accused of a criminal activity and you're acquitted, that uh, the money that you spent uh, defending yourself, uh, at least uh, as far as uh, attorney fees go, uh, should be reimbursed. And my philosophy on that is that uh, the government brings charges, the government fails to prove the charges, uh, the government should pay. Uh, and, uh, but that's my opinion. And uh, what do you guys think? Well, uh, I don't necessarily disagree with it, but I think it's a little bit unclear. The question is, they're entitled to be reimbursed for their cost, but from whom? From the town, the city, the county, the judge, the DA, from the members of the jury? Who are they? Who who do, who has to reimburse? <laughs> Definitely not the members of the jury. <laughs> they're the ones that acquitted the guy. <laughs> well, I, I I I know, but. Uh, you know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> who who has to pay? You know. Yeah, the point is that it's not clear. And, well, and, and, yeah, go and, ahead. And what is reasonable? What are reasonable attorneys' fees? Well, that no, depends there is on whether or not I'm having to pay you or you're having I, to pay me. Right, exactly. Yeah. No, I, there that's is not. <laughs> we know we know there are ways to determine what reasonable is. Uh, the point here is, is is well taken, and that is that uh, it doesn't specify uh, who. Uh, so. Uh, so it's not clear, but that is a common. That's a common malady of all these bills. You know, they're not uh, they're not very well written, so we have to deal with that. But as far as it goes, uh, you, you you, Archie, you like it? Oh, I, I I like it, but I think it needs to be clarified about right. who you're going to recover from. Right, know? and and I'm in agreement with that. Okay, so we all Don't all like three it, are in agreement. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, if and when this uh, bill comes up, uh, which will probably be in the House, excuse me, in the Senate uh, uh, floor, uh, meaning a full Senate uh, vote in the next uh, couple of weeks, uh, express your opinion to your legislators. Senate Bill SCR 1040, short title. Permanent school fund distribution uses. Uh, this uh, bill was uh, in the Senate Education Committee, and it passed along uh, along partisan lines. Introduced by uh, Senator Mesnard, and basically what it does is that it requires that any monies that are taken from the Arizona State Land uh, fund uh, be uh, used to uh, to service capital debt by school district before the money can be used for anything else. And as far as that goes, it makes a lot of sense. If you're going to give money to them, uh, then uh, it, they should uh, they should uh, not default on their debt. Uh, the bigger question, though, becomes: Is this even legal to be rating the trust fund to begin with in the manner that they're doing it and I think Archie has some ideas on that yeah I certainly do 
And as I've raised the question to my uh, constituents here, the question is, of you out there, how many of you have a trust? Now, let me ask you, if you have a trust, do you think the Arizona State Legislature has any authority to amend your trust? Well, no, they don't. They don't have any authority to amend this trust either. So a member of legislature of the legislature, and this bill is totally beyond the power of the state legislature to do. Uh, and what they're attempting to do is amend the provisions of the Enabling Act, and they don't have the authority to do that. And if you look at the Constitution, the Constitution somewhat mirrors the, the Enabling Act. And so this bill then violates the Arizona Constitution, and the Arizona legislature has no authority, none, in their representative capacity to introduce any bill that amends the Enabling Act or our Constitution. They just don't. So that's my opinion, and I'm going to stick with it because they just have no authority to do this, period. Well, the only thing that they're doing is putting it to the voters because it is a concurrent resolution. So uh, in Arizona, you can amend the Constitution by a uh, simple majority of the mob, uh, which again is another thing that I am totally opposed to, and I think, Archie, you are opposed to that as well, but it's done all the time, unfortunately. And apparently it's going to be done this way too because it seems like the bill is advancing. If Mr. Mesnard wants to step outside his representative capacity and as a private citizen introduce a, 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 uh, a, a, a initiative to the people of the state of Arizona, I think he has that authority. But as a member of the legislature, he's introducing a bill and he has no jurisdiction to do that. It's very clear that the Enabling Act, you have a trustor, which is the federal government, you have the trustee, which is the Board of Investments, and you have the beneficiaries, which are the students of common schools. Now you get down to the question of what is a common school, All right? Common school, by state law, is grades 1 through 8. It does not include 9, 10, 11, and 12. So any money spent under the Enabling Act to assist in any way with grades 9, 10, and 11 violates the Enabling Act. It violates the Arizona Constitution, and the members of the legislature have no authority to do that. Okay, so there is no question that, uh, that this is not, uh, not a good thing. Unfortunately, the, the gin is out of the bottle, and it's going to be very difficult to put it back in. And my comment on this simply is the school districts need to learn how to budget their money and not go into well debt. that's not going to happen either so and so that's my simple okay so uh, we have a uh, we have a situation here where uh, I don't know I think we all agree at least in some part that this is not a good idea correct well uh, I, I'm, in I'm very definitely agree with that yeah mm -hmm. so I'm going to say we're all three no on this right Okay. For different reasons, For different but, reasons but, but all know. This brings to an end this week's edition of Arizona Bill Watch. Thank you for watching. If you like what you saw, please make sure you tell your friends, relatives, and anyone else you know. And make sure you tune in next week for another fantastic edition of Arizona Bill Watch.